So let's get started. Our first speaker, uh, Fed Federico Landini, received his BA in literature at the Catholic University in Milan and is now working on his master's in medieval history at the University of Bologna with a thesis on the reception of the Byzantine Empire in heavy metal music. His interests are mainly military history and heavy metal, and he is a member of the student organization Casus Belli Arma Mater Studiorum, which covers every aspect of warfare from ancient times to the present. His paper called Flavius Belisarius Epicus Metallicus is forthcoming in the journal Nuova Antologia Militare, and he's published another one called The Influence of Climate on the Nomadic Population of the Eurasian Steppe, the case of the Avars and Turks for the journal Information of the Universitat Autonoma de Campeche. Today, he will talk about new bards in town, Bardo Magno, Voidalesimo e Libertà, and the reception of the Middle Ages in Italian folk rock. Federico, uh, you may start the, the screen share. Okay. Hello. Share sound check for clip video check. I can share. Uh, where's here? So I don't see you on the side, so uh, I will be basically blind. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, First of all, thank you for having me again for the second edition of this conference. Uh, I will. I have the hard task to start on the, the fun times. So let's get on. First of all, I want to do a little serious part by the tackling on the three main terms that we need to be sure about. First of all, obviously, the first one is medieval, then medievalism, and then neo-medievalism. Of course, that's the most obvious thing for medieval. We, we, then we, we mean everything related to the period of history goes between 476 and 1492, its culture, its literature, and how they, they their modes of thinking. With medievalism, instead, we mean the reception and interpretation of the Middle Ages after the Middle Ages. These interpretations are obviously biased by the interpreter and are based on the historical medieval. For example, uh, in Italy, we call the Middle Ages also as the Dark Ages and Dark Ages because the, the, uh, the scholars of the Renaissance themselves as directly heirs of the classic culture. So for them, the Middle Ages were dark. But why neo-medievalism? There is a difference. For when we say neo-medievalism, we refer to another remove of the medieval. We use the trappings of the medieval filter to a medievalist intermediary. For example, most of the fantasy literature of today is neo-medieval and influenced by the work of scholars like Tolkien or the pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood. This term can be applied to purposefully inaccurate portrayals of the Middle Ages, for example, the Monty Python. And this term is not meant to imply a particular grade of accuracy of the every work that can fall under this umbrella term. Uh, Dreaming the Middle Ages. In Italy, in, 18, in 1986, there was a paper published by Umberto Eco, the, the author of 
the name of the rose titled uh, 10 ways to dream the middle ages and he goes on by analyzing all the ways uh, Italian culture has dreamt of the Middle Ages and uh, but sa says that we don't dream it because it is the past but because we don't dream about the Middle Ages because it's the past because we also have a past that's ancient Rome, classical Rome, imperial Rome, etc, etc but because the Middle Ages represents the cradle of Europe and modern culture. Also, we can say that in that time where invented all the things we are still being with, like banks, universities, hospitals, and even the touristic organization. We can, today, uh, for us metalheads, they're back in open air that which substitute to Jerusalem, it can be compared to Jerusalem because for any metalhead going to the back in open air, it's like going on a pilgrimage every day. And so the comparison can hold up. In his article, Echo says that we have a different approach between our Roman and our medieval heritage in Italy. The Roman heritage is faced with philological reconstruction. We reconstruct and then we leave it there for this and for touristic and uh, for. But our medieval heritage is faced with a different approach that he calls utilitarian mending. Uh, but because we use it and reuse it, reuse it, reuse it again. For, uh, as, as I said before, banks, universities, hospitals were born in the Middle Ages and we are still using them in probably some different ways, but still using them again. But if we reach this Middle Ages only by mending it and not reconstructing it, then every possible dream of the Middle Ages doesn't represent the dream of the Middle Ages, but of only one of the possible Middle Ages. So, if every dream of the Middle Ages, the dream of one Middle Ages, of which dream and of which Middle Ages are we talking about? In his paper, Echo creates 10 different ways to dream the Middle Ages. The main one, the main I, I say main because it's the most relatable to this presentation, is the second one. It's the Middle Ages of the ironic revisitation of the revisitation of Ariosto and maybe also that, that of Sir Miguel de Cervantes. We go back to the imagery of a, of a past epoch, of a past era that is seen as past and non-reproductible. Have some irony on our dreams and on what we are no more. Ariosto revisits the Middle Ages as Sergio Leone revisits the West. It's a kind, it's the Middle Ages of nostalgia, but an atheistic nostalgia. Also, here we have the first approach with feudalism liberta, and uh, I thought it was appropriate to pair some serious and some comic. The for those who don't speak and don't understand and don't read Italian, uh, the, the text says, when you order pizza with pineapple on it, but it's the Middle Ages. I'll let you elaborate while for a <laughs> It's fine. Also, now 
with on with the main topic feudalesimo e libertà what is feudalesimo e libertà feudalesimo e libertà is a now is a facebook page a community that if we count facebook instagram and twitter adds up to around a million followers when it was created it was created in december 2012 by six unknown guys with their nicknames one of it like bernard Pui, Falter, von der Vogelheide, uh, every, and etc. etc. Et they were inspired in their dreams of a mystic vision by the directly the Holy Roman Emperor to fight against moral and social decay of modern times and to invoke a return to the Middle Ages. In the first years of their life as a Facebook page, they presented themselves as a satirical political party with its own program. And believe me, they were taken very seriously. They also, they, they also said once in a podcast that there, was, there were some nobles that pledged their support to help them regain their rights, basically. Federalism Libertà is deeply rooted in the present and their main object is present the present as the true dark age and the Middle Ages as the true modernity, a golden age that we need to reach. They use also for this uh, object a different kind of language. They use a neo-vulgar Italian. They also have charity projects. They have an online shop that we'll see later. And they also have their yearly festival called Agnata. And Argomagno is their side project. OK. First of all, I want I wanted to approach a little their political side. Obviously, they are joking. They are mocking ev everything and everyone. Their, their political title is, uh, is titled Full Speed Backward. It is comprised, you can buy it on their shop, and it is comprised by 15 chapters each one dedicated to a point of the program like economy, labor, internal and external affairs, environment, civil rights, etc. They, uh, they are very, uh, they, have a, they have a high attention to sustainability, eco-friendliness and inclusiveness with a few exceptions. They say that their political program is accessible to everyone even to plebeian and illiterate, thanks to the illustrations and the graphics. I've said inclusiveness and accessible to everyone. That's not really the truth. Accessible to everyone, but not too obvious. Tatars, Manichaeans, lefties, Lutherans, Anglicans, Orthodoxes, atheists, and wealthy. Basically, it's accessible to those, to the partisans of the emperor and obviously Catholic. <laughs> it, this political party is also widespread and has a wide support within all the social classes. We have the Marius the Serf that says, I vote feudalism libertà because Corbet is the only remedy to unemployed. While Dante, the author of the Divine Comedy, says, I vote fell because Pope Bonifacius VIII has people. Here, we have a little excerpt of their, one of their points. This feudalism libertà says, no, to the scientific research. 
why they are against it. Because scientific research does not heal the sickness of the body, does not cure the sins of the soul. It is conducted by atheists and rat killers, and it's headed not by prophets or heroes. So, if they say no, what's their counter-proposal? It's easy. Quests for the Holy Grail and self-flagellation and hunts like, a, like the true Middle East. Also, they have their proposal for child education. If the child are bored at school, don't like school, and don't come anymore to school, they have their solution. Abol abolish the schools and open up their so they can employ themselves in a, a productive manner. Now, one topic I wanted to really uh, touch upon, their charity project. Yes, they joke a lot. Yes, they are not always serious. Yes, they can provoke sometimes but they also are ready to help the community when it's necessary. On the, on the right of the screen, there's the design for a t-shirt that you can't buy anymore in this fashion uh, that says everything will be fine. This uh, particular t-shirt was created during the pandemic, as you can see on the on the files of the death. Uh, it's, the title is a take on the song of Angelo Branduardi, Ballo in Fa Diesis Minore from 1977, and it is, and it presents a reversal of the role of death. You can see there also abundant medieval symbolism. There's the, the pendant at the neck of the plague doctor, that's the symbol of Asclepius and medicine, while the hourglass on the death is the representation of the caducity. On the bottom, it says, e tu del tempo non sei più signora, which means, and you are no longer the mistress of meaning that death has been defeated by and science. Uh, also, I I wanted to present this particular meme because it uh, it said uh, I have translated on the right so you can read it, and I is particularly fitting because it is the embodiment of their belief that the true modern that today is the true middle ages and it says when did we destroy the natural balance of the planet and polluted water air earth the modern age etc etc so in the end which which one is the true dark age the middle ages uh, also um, feudalism libertà is as that said it's particularly rooted on the present because they take inspiration from every news they can. A few uh, weeks ago, I don't remember honestly when, there was this new that in a, a narcos in Ecuador escaped and uh, created chaos in South America. Here, the modern blends with the medieval in a fun and ironic way. Also, since it's South America, they create an ironic blend between South America, conquistadors, and the A-team. So if you have a problem, and if no one else can help you, and you can find them, maybe you can hire the famous instead of the A-team, 
it's placed back in the Middle Ages, even though the conquistadors are not really considered Middle Ages. And we have this result. Uh, obviously, when it's right on time, you can you and you can make the link between the, the news and the meme, it's obviously more fun and on the long run can be not really have the same not cannot have the same impact. Also, another one. We have the typical Viking raid, but here again we have reversed the significance of the picture, the meaning of the picture. Here the Vikings are not the raiders and the villagers the raided. Instead, the Vikings are acting in the in this interpretation almost like firefighters, while the villagers are lazing about on the ground. It, it says some willing Vikings save valuables from a house on fire while the lazy locals enjoy some rest laying on the ground. Also, we can say that Feudalism Liberta uses also the films. Also, cinema is used. Oh no, cinema is. Here, we have another meme that is very related to present times. We have the. Uh, during the pandemic, there was it was presented to the public the project of the Super League, where the top teams in Europe were going to play together and get a lot of money. Here, it is they take the concept of this Super League that's for and pair it with the whole holy Super League that faced the Turks in uh, during the Battle of Lepanto in 1571. Now we, the, I promise you the last memes, we have also, they use a lot of films to uh, pair the Middle Ages and the modernity. On the right, we have uh, obviously the cover for seven for the winner of seven Oscars, Oppenheimer, but instead of Oppenheimer, feudalism and liberty has transformed it in Hohenstaufen, dedicated to Federico II di, di Svevia, the son of, of the South. The Puer, Julie, and uh, Stupor Mundi. Well, on the left, we have Dune Part 2 that is paired, that, that, that takes the theme of desert and the theme of water and pairs it with the Battle of Hakin, where the Crusader were defeated by the Saracens because they fought away from water. And in the middle, you can find 1997 Escape from New York that is has transformed, has been transformed to 1376 Escape from Avignon, a film of Giovanni, Giovanni Carpentiere that is the Italianization of John Carpenter. And uh, the main character is Pope Gregorius. Last one we have on the on the left, Trading Places, the typical Christmas movie, at least for us in Italy. And instead of Eddie Murphy and then Aykroyd, you get the Rico Secondo and Otto Port. In the middle, we have Teutonic with protagonists Levin Hart, Funzig, and Hermann von Salza, 
instead of Leonardo DiCaprio and uh, mainly I, that I don't remember. Uh, Federico, can I just just um, break in for a moment? Um, yes. Yeah. We only have about seven minutes left for the whole session. Okay, okay, so, okay, okay. I will go fast. Thank you. They have a shop, an online shop, serves directly to finance the emperor coffins. And you can see some of them. Medievalic and Ferra Virgo are direct take on Metallica and Iron Maiden. And also Carlemiao and Medievolution. And they have their yearly festival. On the, on the left, you see their flyer. And uh, they it is a yearly festival uh, that should have reached the 10th edition, but it's only on the 6th because there was a pandemic in between. It's on, this time it's on two days. There are 15 bands and 35 shows, like what, public history, etc. Like peer contests, most student costume. This is the band, their side project, The Voice of the Emperor, Argumanio. Uh, it's a, it's their musical project founded in 2014, but there was an early approach in 2013 when Manuel of Steel created the team Fidelism Libertà for the community. Their album makes satirical covers of family time pop songs and their own original songs. It is a folk rock written in a vernacular macaron macaroni, neo-Italian, created with a mix of vulgar Latin, neologism, and literal translation from other languages. This is their first album, and uh, it's mostly a uh, pure medieval rock, like uh, uh, Black Moors Night, if you want a reference. And this was the lineup it presents Pope Alemanno I, which is the voice of Holy Martyr, Abdul the Bar, which is from Nano World Steel, and the other two guys are from folk rock band, medieval rock band, folk steel. This one is also their most probably popular and second album that came out after the pandemic. And this is their actual formation where there are no more Folkstone members, but a part one. Okay, I'll go quick. The first uh, song I wanted to analyze a little bit is uh, Marco Polo. It's their latest single. It came out on the 8th of January because it was uh, mm, the 7th, 700th anniversary of the death of the Venetian merchant Marco Polo. Here, as you can see from the album cover, Marco Polo is modernized. It, becomes, it goes from merchant to TikToker, influencer, and a travel blogger. And there are more or less five kinds of cultural reference Italian, popular, Venetian references. Chinese and the Middle Ages. I will go quite fast on this occasion because I want to let the picture speak. And if there's something uh, notable, I will highlight for you. So at, at this point, can I ask if um if people have questions as as um we're looking at the images? Um, yeah. Maybe you can type them in and I can sort of ask them as we go, because we just have only uh, under four minutes left. OK, no, I we can do it later. So I will go directly to the other two songs very quickly, if you want. OK, the second. The second song was Screwed by another single published on the anniversary of the Battle of Lepanto. The cover of I Am is here by Jamie Jamison and the opening title of Day Watch. The video resembles the opening titles of an 80s, 90s TV series, in particular of the 
Baywatch, which scrutinizes the translation and vulgarization in Italian. As you can see, we have the Baywatch one. So the last one that and the song that I want you to hear directly is Nel Mio Feudo. It's a song created with the intention of satisfying the desire for revenge of the truly nostalgic. So uh, I have to come out of the presentation a little. And uh, thank you for having me and putting up with me by losing too much time on the first. There are English subtitles with different people. E quando l'aquila oserà e sull'Europa volerà sarà indietro tutta nel mio feudo. E quando a Roma marcerà Got it. 